thanks everybody for taking some time this evening to to listen to myself and Matt. Um, my name is Jim Parker. I'm the president owner of iDry Systems here in Barrie, Vermont. I'm sitting in our factory where we build these kilns from scratch. And um, I'm here with Matt Rubin. And Matt's been a customer for some time. He is um, the owner of Rubin Custom Sawmill located in Minnesota. And um, we're just gonna go, th I'll quickly go through um, a little bit about me and us uh, in case some of you don't know, and then we'll get right into learning about Matt and his business. And uh, at the end, uh, well, while we're talking, feel free to click on that Q&A button and type in any questions you might have for, for me or Matt. And, and then towards the end, we'll get, um, we'll get into those questions and see if we can get you some answers. Um, so, so like I said, I'm in Barrie, Vermont, which is central Vermont. We've been building vacuum kilns here for 41 and a half years. And um, our business has changed quite a bit over the years, but we have, we introduced three or four years ago, the iDry standard, which is the first kiln Matt bought. And then uh, added the iDry plus, which is the same thing, but twice the size. And then more recently, a faster version of those that technology called iDry Turbo, um, which uses aluminum heating plates to dry. And then even more recently, which you can't quite see it behind me, is the, the iDry Turbo Pro, which is the biggest machine we've ever built, 15,000 board foot capacity. Um, if I could, I'd show you an iDry Plus next to that, and you'd be shocked to see the size. Uh, it's kind of stunning how big this 47,000 pound machine is. Um, and then very recently, we've added another product called the iDry Turbo Mini, which is a small plate dryer uh, targeted for the, mostly for the furniture flooring millwork guys who wanna buy green, green lumber from sawmills and dry it rather than buy dry lumber, maybe through brokers or um, you know get what they can get. Um, so that's just on the market or will be on the market in 2022. So, but we're really here to talk about Matt and his business and where he came from and where he's going, where he is and where he's going. Um, I don't know Matt super well, but we talked, uh, was it two years ago now, Matt, when you bought your first count? Yeah, it was, was it October 2019 is when I 19. first called into you guys. Wow. Amazing. And so we'll talk about where you started, um, a little bit about you and, and then kind of where you're progressing. Um, but you are, from what I gather, quite, quite the guy. It seems like you <laughs> weren't in the wood business and then you were in the wood business. So I really want to hear, yep. hear you talk a little bit about where you came from. Um, some of your interests and hobbies and so on, but also the day job and how you're transitioning um, into this yeah. this business you've built. So maybe just take away and tell me a little bit about you and, and the sawmill. Yeah, I guess, where do we start? So um, yeah, I pretty much jumped into the business. I have, I've had a lot of questions like, how'd you get started? People think that um, it was like a family business that I inherited because it's a sawmill business. And I, I have to tell them, no, I just, you know, I just started this three years ago. Some people think that I was a tree service that, you know, had been collecting logs and that wasn't the case either. Uh, I literally started a sawmill business from scratch three years ago. Um, just kind of out of curiosity. I, it seemed like a fun thing to do. I knew there was a business side to it. I didn't really get into that until I was comfortable milling and understanding wood, you know, just getting to know how, how it, how it is and the different species and all that sort of thing. So, um, 
when I bought my sawmill in April of 2018, I didn't have any logs. I'd never talked to a sawmill operator. I'd never been to a sawmill. So that kind of gives you an idea on where I started. I literally it sounds been... like ignorance is blessed a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My my only two thoughts were I have land and I'm not lazy. That was that, that <laughs> was awesome. my reason reason for getting the, getting into it. So um, I guess if, if I think back further, I, you know, I think back all the way to like second grade. And in second grade, we learned that the the rainforest in the Amazon were getting burned down. How much valuable right. lumber was just getting burned. So that kind of stuck with mm-hmm. me for a long time, I guess. And um, in tenth grade, I went to the uh, Louisville Bat Factory in Louisville, Kentucky, yep. because I'm a baseball player. So that interested me. So right after that trip, I bought a lathe off of eBay, and that was my first woodworking piece of equipment. So um, in tenth grade. In tenth grade, yeah. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. So I started making bats in tenth grade just for fun, just to hit a park. Um, you know, that's awesome. and then from there. Uh, went to college. I was an exercise science major. Uh, did did some physical physical training sessions, uh, physical training uh, clients for a while for a couple of years, and then just phased out of that. Didn't really like uh, that business very much. And then I got a job at a steel mill. So um, it's kind of similar. It's kind of funny how similar the steel mill is to a sawmill. A steel mill, you're taking recycled scrap, melting it down, turning it into uh, a, a semi-finished product and then it goes through another process and another process another process so I was actually uh, the heat treat supervisor which is funny because it's kind of similar to having a kiln mm, so right. um, interesting in that you did have a kiln I bet right to yeah, heat that, treat and anneal and all that yep yep so cool. my, my kiln got a lot hotter than the eye drive but yeah it's, I bet uh, it did. <laughs> it's all it's all very similar so i guess that what huh. i'm saying is that i was kind of i was in in a business where it's so it's so much similar to a sawmill business so i kind of had an understanding of production and quality mm. control and everything that goes into the making of something so right um the the jumping into the wood wasn't that big of a deal, I don't think. So how, how to take just, a raw material, a learning, so. like as raw of a material as you can get, and then transform it into something that somebody can walk away with and and use and right. be useful and pay you for. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yep. When did you? So, was, so you bought the? So you buy this wood miser? How how long ago? Three years ago? Yeah, April 2018 is when I brought the mill home. Okay. Um, and then that was the that first thing you summer, bought. The in first this. thing I didn't I didn't have any other woodworking tools besides that lathe I just told you about. So I right. had like wow. A, a a Bosch jigsaw was my next best tool. I didn't even own a chainsaw. <laughs> when I bought the awesome. Just yeah. Just so everybody understands. They want everybody to understand, like you can if you want to get into this kind of business, you certainly can. I yeah, did. It's so amazing. um here we are. You know what's funny, Matt, is I I talked to a lot of sawmill owners you know, small, medium, large. And I find that when I talk to the second, third, fourth generation type sawmill businesses, like you say, people assume you're a second or family generation sawmill, sawmill guy. But when I talk to those people, they literally can't understand why anybody would ever want to get into the saw, sawmill business. <laughs> you know, it's usually when I'm talking to the third or fourth generation and they're like, I just don't understand. It would be so hard because they know how hard it was for their grandfathers or their great grandfathers to buy this equipment, you know, on a shoestring and put it together and do and get it running themselves and figure out the pitfalls and just doing that hard manual labor and then finding people to work for them and like the idea of starting that from scratch for most people in the sawmill world seems impossible, but it's interesting that you just didn't know about any of any of that. All you saw was a raw material that could get data into a product. And like you said, you like to work hard, which is kind yeah. of amazing. Yeah, that was that was my that was my reasoning for getting into it. Was it interesting? It looked like fun and I I'm not lazy, so right. And, but you had a farm, I take it at that point, or you had some land, you had some property where you could put this thing. Yep. We, 
my family and I moved out to our property now. It was about five years ago. We weren't wow. even, the funny thing is we weren't even looking to move and we were out on the river and our alert came up on our phone that this, there was an open house, like a mile from the boat launch. Uh, we're like, wow. That's interesting. <laughs> that's awesome. So we get off the boat and then just drive up to this open house. And it's, it's an old farmhouse with old buildings and wow. Um, we we're like, well, Perfect. it looks like a lot. It looks like a lot of work just as a property. Like the property needs a right. lot of work, but right. I cannot, but you don't mind working. <laughs> we kind of just looked at each other and said, well, let's go for it. So we scrambled <laughs> to sell our existing home. And, you know, without, without that alert under my phone, I would have never started this business because I would have never Amazing. been here. You couldn't have done it. So you were living in where? More in the city back then? Yeah, more in, more in the city. Uh, again, just a, closer, a closer suburb to St. Paul. Okay. And you're working in St. Paul. Yep. Okay. Got it. So you're more, you're moving far, further away, but not that far away from work totally yeah. into a different environment yep like upheaving did you you must did you have kids at that point yeah we had uh three kids at that time oh my god three little girls yep interesting cool. and a super brave pioneering type wife yes <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome wow well, yeah that's that's kind of Amazing. the backstory as to, to how things came to be so far right Great. So you get there and then you've got the sawmill and you set that up and imagine you're doing all kinds of like home renovation and, and honeydew lists that are super long and build a barn or whatever you got to do. So did you just start sawing, just start finding, like, how'd you even find logs where there's, was there enough property you could take some trees down and get started cutting? Cause you knew nothing. You're never been in the sawmill business. Yeah, or so it's the sawmill, anything. The the very first the very first log I put on the mill was wasn't really a log. It was a branch, a small branch that fell off my <laughs> ash tree. <laughs> yeah, awesome. But the, once I once I once I figured out that I need to buy a chainsaw after I buy a sawmill, um, right. I, I decided, and I'd never cut a tree down before either. So um, wow. I went on YouTube and, and watched YouTube on how to yeah. cut a tree down, and the only tree that I could find that, that was big enough that was dead was right by my house, maybe 30 feet from my house. God, that was scary. And I'm looking at him like, I think I can drop this. <laughs> so nobody was home at the time, it was just me. Good and call. <laughs> I cut, cut the tree down, right, landed it right where I wanted it to. I'm like, all right, I can cut a tree wow. down. So, um, and then at the time I didn't have anything to move logs besides a chain on my truck. So I dragged it over to the sawmill. Right. And uh, that was my first big log that I sawed up. And then Amazing. it was just a matter of like reaching out to tree services and answering yep. ads, people giving away logs uh, on Craigslist. Incredible. That's when I started getting logs. Yeah. So, so that's started. how your supply started. It was just your I own tree the, and then reaching out to the tree guys, which makes tons of sense. Yeah. I spent the summer of, of that first year just trying to find logs and collecting logs. Right. So. Right. As I, you as I keep started collecting, I was cutting. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was, I kept cutting, kind of building an in, inventory. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember one day just looking, looking at my inventory that I built and like just sit, sitting there staring at it like, hmm, yeah. All right. This is cool, <laughs> but I should start selling some of this. So right. I started selling green slabs, green wood, and, you yep. know, people loved it. Mm -hmm. But uh, who bought it? Who are you selling to at that maybe, point? To, you're, you've got these piles just, of stickered slabs and lumber, but it's wet. So who comes in and gets yeah. that? I mean, I'd have to, I'd have to educate people on the fact that you need to dry it somehow, whether you let it air dry okay. for a long air time dry. or you yep. go find a magical kiln somewhere that doesn't right. exist. Um, <laughs> yeah. But people would, right. people would buy, the crazy part was people would buy green slabs right off the mill and in, in high volumes and it blew my mind. But at the same time, it was, yeah. I always felt like I was disappointing people because they can't use it right away. So uh, right. in the fall of 2018, I, I started trying to figure out, well, what's the best way I can get this stuff dry? Yeah, and interesting. I, at first I started building a solar kiln. Okay. And again, this was just me wanting to, to do something better. Sure. And halfway through the solar kiln build, I found I dry somewhere. Okay. Yep. That 2018 timeframe, maybe, or 2019, maybe. 
Interesting. In, 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 2000, in 2018, I found somebody somehow that had an eye dry, and okay. I called them. They were, yep. they were in Michigan. Okay. Uh, small town hardwoods, I think is their name. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. They Great. might have been some of your first customers. Yep. I think I, I do remember them, sure. Um, so what, I, I just called this guy one day and I said, hey, how does this thing work? <laughs> you know, right. like, is, it, is, it, is it that good? And he's like, oh, yeah. You know, this is how it works. And you do this and you do Did that. you go see him or anything, or you just talked on the phone? I just, I just talked to him on the phone, and then uh, huh. after that conversation, I, uh, you know, went on your website and just started researching more. And uh, based on what he was telling me, it was, it was the way to go. So right. I, uh, I at that point, I started to, to think about buying a kiln. But the problem was, I just started in business, so I didn't really have right. any credit or Any anything savings or credit or yeah. anything like that so it, well, it, at that time it wasn't feasible right interesting it's still backing up a little bit it still baffles me that you can buy a sawmill get some free logs from a tree company or something cut cut that into you know some thickness sticker it up stack it and sell it to people who don't have a kiln so you know, you're, and you're doing the right thing. You're educating them. So they're not, it's not like they don't know the problem they're facing, but, but does this pile of wet wood just basically move from your yard to their yard? And then, but they're so pat, what's fascinating to me is that they're so, you're so passionate about it. They're so passionate about it. They see the beauty in these logs and in the opening the log up and seeing this lumber and it's so beautiful. And they imagine probably all the projects they could do with it and they're so excited about it it doesn't seem to matter that much that it's not even useful for a lot of projects quite yet they're that excited they're willing to wait and see see what happens you know what i mean just yeah that, that, it was it was crazy to me that like i said that people would i mean i would i would saw stuff on the mill like on a i'd do it like a demonstration sawmill day and, yeah. and people would buy it slab right off the mill the mill like oh my god that's amazing that's i want it so and uh it, you know it's just crazy to me it just blew yeah. my mind and yep. they knew that they needed to wait but they i don't right. think they really knew they didn't care they did yeah they just didn't care and it was just they're well they're emotional about it i think there's yeah. something really emotional about a piece of wood it's why we all do what we do it's so interesting to me and I could and I could tell them exactly where I got that piece of wood, and they thought that was yeah. The worst too, you so. told them the story about it. Yep. yep. Interesting. I think telling the story about where this log came from, and and it, I already can hear that you care a lot about the part of your business where you're recycling, you're reusing, you're upcycling even better yep. some tree that otherwise would have gotten chipped or thrown in the landfill or buried or whatever, and so you feel passionate about that it seems i'm sure i'm sure you can help other people become pretty passionate about that yeah right off the bat being able to share that was pretty cool um mm -hmm. but but again like i said it was just amazing that um i could just turn slabs that fast right um right without people without i think they they didn't fully understand what it takes to get it dry. And even to this yeah. day, I'm still educating people yeah, for sure. what it takes uh, to properly dry something. And yeah. um, it, it still blows their minds. It, you know, I'll it, say that I'll wow. say that my kiln can dry something in four weeks and they're like, it's that long. I'm like, no, yeah. that's really fast. No, that's fast. <laughs> <So>. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's the thing. I, I, 20 years ago, I can remember being a lot younger talking to people on the phone about kilns, especially in this part of the industry, the wood miser part of the industry, uh, portable sawmill guys. And it, they either didn't know they needed to kiln dry at all, or kilns were bad because to be honest, a lot of the kilns back then did destroy a lot of wood. And so all they knew of a kiln was I put this I cut this log open and I have, I take this beautiful, perfect piece of wood and I just destroy it in a kiln. And so I don't, so kiln drying became kind of bad. And then, it, then it became sort of necessary. And then it's, well, how do we do it better? And it's been this evolution of education that you would think probably would have ha happened a hundred years ago when people started first 
cutting hardwood or hundreds of years ago, cutting hardwood and making it into furniture and putting it in somebody's home, turning the heat on. But no, it's actually kind of recent and we're still almost pioneers in trying to educate people about properly dried wood and disinfecting it, killing insects, making it stable. Why we're even doing this in the first place. Right. So anyway, that's fascinating to me. Um, so, so you start, so you get the kill in 2019. Is that right? Or is it even 2020? I ordered it in 2019. Got it. I, I got it fully installed. I think it was, it was right the day, like the day after Kobe Bryant died. That's how I remember it. Get um, out of here. Okay. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was that time. So, um, so, so you install at Zydry standard you got first, right? Yep. And then, uh, and you put that where in, in, a, in your barn or, or somewhere? Yeah. So the story was, I didn't, I didn't have a good space in one of my old buildings because number one, yep. they leak. Number two, they don't have right. adequate power. And number three, they That's don't have true. water connection. So, right. Yeah, uh, I ordered a shipping container and I put it right by my well house. Okay. So power and yep. water five feet well, away. So that's awesome. Yep. And you shoved it in the shipping container. I very carefully rolled it off the back of the trailer. In the <laughs> you so shoved it in the now, shipping container. <laughs> I, I it. It's amazing what you could do with like a tractor and, and a lot of sweat. <laughs> yep. like, that's awesome. So you fire this thing up and I don't remember hearing from you a lot so it must have gone pretty well in the beginning of I mean you had never dried wood before right you had stickered right. and sacked wood outside but like what was going through your head when you turn on this shiny black box and pile wood in it like what what did you think was going to happen well I uh I had significant research into it so i thought okay. that you know, it would it would be just fine if i just pressed the button it would just button. work and yep. i didn't play with any settings I, a lot of the stuff i had air dried for six months plus right. so right um, easy to dry yeah so the first load i had it completely full i mean i jammed every single piece of wood possible <laughs> in there yep. and the biggest the biggest prize in there was some 10 foot 20 inch wide walnut slabs that were Whoa. that were milled at two inches thick and okay. I'm telling you, they did not move in the drying process because I flattened them at inch and three quarter. Uh, Whoa. Both sides, I finished. I, so, I mean, they barely moved. They 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 were dried perfectly. So crazy. And that first, so I would do like weekend sales. Um, yep. That's kind of when they started doing things. And that that uh -huh. first weekend of sales, I sold almost all that entire kiln load. I think I sold that entire kiln load after I had in one it weekend. Up. Yeah. Which was like, worth what? Uh, it was a six thousand dollar weekend. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and this is a hobby. Like this was I a mean, hobby. You can see what the next question thing. is going to be, but like right now, you're you moved in the country. You bought this sawmill. You thought that'd be cool. You're still doing your day job, which is what sell at the steel mill. Yeah. And commuting to the city, so you're pretty much what sawing like sawing on the weekend stacking up some wood or you're pulling from your air dried piles shoving in the kiln the kiln just hit start right you're not fussing with that and you're going back to your day job and then when the kiln's done it's like the easy bake oven the cake's ready to sell and you pull it out and you would have a sale that weekend yeah i would like i would literally like pull out like the the big sale that first time it was uh right. like a friday night i pulled out the load and i was planing slabs till like two in the morning Oh my God. Get ready for this sale. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's like a, it's like the kiln shuffle, I call it. You get, you get the right. load out and then try to get the next one in quick as possible. Yep. And then it's, yep. it's shove it in, close it off. Get your marketing in, get your advertising out there. And then it's game on for, you know, the next, the next weekend. So crazy. So, um, okay. So you're, so you're that weekend, that Friday or that weekend, you're kind of pulling slabs out. You're flattening, you're just going nuts on the, on the CNC or your flattener or whatever it is. Yep. What is it? What do you have? A wood whiz or something? Uh, I started out with a 25 inch planer. Okay. I have a, I have a router table now, but um, okay. at the time, yeah, I was just shoving whatever I could through the planer. Oh my God. Um, cause every, cause like I said, everything dried, everything dried yes. flat enough that I could just 
plane is going to be okay. Right. Thank uh, God. Didn't have to worry about <laughs> thank God it was flat because if you're trying to you're trying to <laughs> shove a 20 inch board through this planer that I'm guessing isn't like a you know 50 horsepower planer. Oh my God, right, man. So- so yeah, the board everything came out flat enough that I can just run it through the planer. You know, very yep. minimal twister warp. So cool. Um, anyways, so yeah, that first that first weekend, that first kill mode of sales, I'm like, okay. You knew now you I had feel something. like I have something, but yeah, but I, I need another one. I need to start planning for another kill. That's that was right. my first thought. I, I I'm gonna need yep. another one soon. Because so. you were sawing faster than you were drying, because you're still sawing, right? And then you're stickering off yep. the sawmill and you're stacking it up in the yard and it's air drying and then you're pulling from those piles as you can. Um, what, by the way, what sawmill, which wood miser do you have? The- I have the LT40 standard, but I've, I have okay. a modified it. I cut it in half and extended it 10 inches. Okay. Oh, width wise. Yeah. Right. Got it. So you can go up to what now, like, 36 40 36, yeah. yeah yeah okay that's cool so so you're sawing you're getting plenty of logs i take it still like yep. the tree guys are more than happy to drop these logs at your doorstep and then you're finding time like how i'm curious how long does it typically take you to saw up a kiln's worth of wood whatever that wood is slabs or lumber. you know actual sawmill time and maybe three or four hours because i'm just doing slabs oh, wow. so it goes really fast right. yeah you know, there's some time stacking stickering stacking. and strapping sure. but um you yep. know sawmill Half time is very, very insignificant compared to so, everything else. so it's not the bottleneck you're you're saw you're in half a day you've got a kiln's worth of wood that you're then letting air dry because you can always go faster than the kiln by a long shot right. and then you're just pulling are you ever in such a hurry that you're taking that pile you cut off the mill yesterday and trying to shove it through the kiln or you just don't need to do that or found that it's not good to do that or what's i, I think i know the answer but yeah there's only been one occurrence where i actually cut that day or the day before and i put it in the kiln so i had part yep. of the reason i got the idra because i knew you could you could take stuff off the mill yep, I Obviously, had to. Had to play with the settings a little bit to not hit it so aggressively but right um i cut some nine quarter white oak and some ten quarter walnut slabs for a custom job oh last last june yeah right off the, white oak right off the mill i'm talking you know that day it was going oh in the my kiln. god I'm having stress sweats just thinking about what you're about to do. So, you know. <laughs> people people ask me, they I, I kind of told a few people and they're like, well, let me know how that goes. And they kind of just Yeah, started. I bet they wanted to know. <laughs> yeah. And uh so I, I I turned it down a little bit. I went at yeah. like 120 degrees and turned the vacuum to 20, I think it was. Oh, and yeah. um I did that for a couple of weeks just to take it easy. And this this white oak took little over five weeks to dry below 10 percent right and it turned out again just flat as could be i mean wow. almost no movement very no crazy good. checking or honeycombing crazy or anything checking. no crazy checking at all there's a wow. little bit of honeycomb a little yeah. bit you know but like well, around knots or around like the yeah. pit, probably yep nothing yep. nothing terrible to the point where that customer would have cared so it depends on right. you know, what yeah. you're it's all about the expectation that's what i tell people all the time i have a customer who just bought five gallons and they want the. they're like can we make it crack and check the wood more I'm like <laughs> sure <laughs> that's easy and they're like we're worried it's not gonna have enough cracks in it because like, okay. wow. they're making some rustic furniture and they want that that's the look yeah. But, yeah some people want the checking so you know it's like, right okay. and then you epoxy it and call it yeah. a day so you so you get into this business it sounds like pretty much in that first weekend you knew you had something did you see it at that moment as something that could become a full-time career or did it still seem like as like amazing hobby business or what well 
my thought is when I bought the sawmill, it was a hobby. When I started selling, it was more of a side hustle type of thing. Like, okay, yep. I could make some money. Extra money. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel at that time it would be sustainable. So after that first kiln load, I thought, okay, now I can, I can make this a sustainable business, but I just need more right. kiln drying capacity. Right. So it, right. It really, it really was, you know, that first weekend of, of success yeah. um, and just feeling so much better about the product that I had putting out. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Just a total shift in how I, how I did things. So what is, a, what's about the time frame? would you say from when you get a log cut to when you're able to sell it? Do you think for, let's call it for your typical load of slabs? <laughs> Uh, anywhere, including flattening it and all that right. stuff. Depending on the species, like I just I just cut some cedar slabs and that some some ten quarter cedar and those were dry nice. in ten days. Wow. Um, so cool. you know, depending on the species, you know, anywhere from three to six months, let's say right now yeah. is where I'm kind of at. Yeah. So you're turning your inventory over basically three to six months. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense um what's your most popular species uh walnut by far yep yep that's that's what i hear from everybody um and it's pretty much all urban salvage logs or do you are you getting it at all into more of a grade log or you know something you could turn into dimensional lumber or any of that yeah they're all really? they're all city trees the only other only other source I have is uh, I, I know a veneer logger that, you know, he'll cut the top off and save the crotch. Ah, logs. Yep. Um, so I get those and that's, that's the only um, mm -hmm. non urban salvaged source that I have. Are you, so you've been in this now for a couple of years, Are you finding that there's competition hot on your trail or is it easy or like, you know, how is it, How's it going business wise? Getting well, there's, there's certainly eating. there's certainly other guys, you know, one man sawmill businesses out there. Uh, sure. we all we all know each other, we all talk, we all collaborate yeah, on occasion. Um, yeah. but as far as like the drying business, there's still there's no like drying business out there. Um hmm. and that's I kind of learned that early on because I I had yeah. asked around for killing. Right, you were looking for one. Yeah, I was I was trying to figure out that part, you know, and just seeing who yeah. had one and nobody had. And, and so, one. are are you a drying business? I didn't ask that yet. We're, I, I know you're. I, I have it as a service, but I'm so far backed up with my you own. You can't stuff do it. I, I just can't do it. I've done a little bit here and there as I can, as it makes sense. You know, a couple right. of boards that can fit in the kiln, but yep, uh, I've turned down enough drying business in the in the time I've had the the eye dry to keep it full for other people. Crazy. Yeah. It's just, it's a problem for everybody. But then again, you have to be careful. Like, do you want to, you're, you have a sawmill and you can sell slabs dry. How much do you want to enable somebody else who has a sawmill to sell dry, dry slabs? It's like, you want to be a nice guy, but if you're drying somebody else's wood, they're, you're not making nearly as much money as you are if you're cutting and drying your own wood. Yeah, it's about you know one sixth of the the profit. Oh my, so. oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah, to be, um, to be very careful. So you're obviously expanding. How are you driving that the sales activity? Are you doing some marketing? It sounds like you are. You said you're promoting your sales on the weekends and stuff. How is that? Yeah, so I work for you. When I first started with the with the selling, I didn't I didn't even know that Facebook Marketplace or Facebook had selling tools for businesses. So yep. um, once I figured that out, I would I would do Facebook events um, through my web page or through my Facebook mm -hmm. page, and okay. just just also put out ads, you know, on the marketplace, um, kind of as an individual logs I would have like the whole set right. of that flash from that log would be one ad so I would just I say that's cool. off that and um I would boost the post I would get I would get a lot of people here um I was kind of I was kind of overwhelmed with the uh amount of people that would come for these uh right. 
sawmill events that I would post out. So it's like an open house, basically. Yeah, it's basically like an open okay. house. Yeah, were you shocked at the response you got from something that you didn't even know existed before this Facebook yeah. stuff? Yeah, it was. It was like I said, Crazy. it was overwhelming at some time. Like at first, I would just have a completely open event, like you just come whenever you want, and right. that became no way. Ten people, ten different cars show up and i'm just oh one my guy. god you've got your families there and yeah so i uh i said okay now i'm by appointment so that's been going a lot better but great uh, organized certainly, certainly an overwhelming response right away when i first started Amazing. so how did that change if at all during this crazy pandemic situation we've been in the last for for most of your time at least with the eye dry you've been in this this crazy right. thing Right, yeah, pretty much when I got it installed, that was when it first hit. So, oh my God, it seemed like a perfect storm because everybody was at yeah. home and wanted a project to do. So, interesting. Um, I, I really, I, I couldn't keep up with the wall, the walnut slab demand, all of last year. Um, so before, yeah. I kind of got, I kind of got a point where I had a little bit of inventory, and then like the next month it was wiped out. So, um, God, I'm still, crazy. I'm still trying to build up inventory from where I was once I had right. a little bit if that makes any sense so I'm still yeah no to totally you're always got, we're the same way we try to have kilns in inventory right and actually I don't know one of these is one of yours your pluses but um we're always trying to have inventory we build for inventory like you saw for inventory because that's what we want we want to have a product that you can get today if you want it or tomorrow you know but it's impossible. All you can do is just keep just trying to optimize and expand and, you know, but be smart about how you invest in your business and super hard. Yep. So Facebook marketplace, you do any Google ads or Instagram, or I think I've seen you on Instagram a bit. Just, just Facebook is all I do. Just Facebook. So wow. You know. And who do you do all of that yourself? Are you, sign and planing and stacking lumber and or do you have help uh i do almost everything myself my wife will help out occasionally with uh mm -hmm. communication but i create okay. all the ads uh wow. i answer almost all the messages do the sales yep. bookkeeping yep everything <laughs> oh, God. unbelievable i'm super happy for you so so what's the what's the future for you obviously you're getting another kiln so you'll have two and not just about the kiln but like what do you where do you see this going what's your what's the matt rubin like two year five year ten year plan yeah i mean i've kind of got some numbers mapped out on what my capabilities will be once i get the second kiln so yeah. uh, you know i can kind of take it however i want i can I yeah. can continue to just do slab sales or I can kind of mix in my, my milling services. I can yep. mix in kiln drying services. Let's say I don't want to work for two weeks. I can load up the yep. kilns and, yeah. and press, press play and then go on vacation. So um, I do want to, I do want to start building more like tabletops, live edge stuff. Uh, that's yep. been going well too. So you're and actually building the, the furniture itself not just selling the wood yep yep i started getting wow. into that I've, I've got a really amazing walnut uh, got a dining room table that's going to be uh coming through next week oh my god um, again I mean, that's got to be the ultimate like what yeah. is the value added from the this log you got for free and to selling a i'm guessing multi-thousand dollar dining room table yeah yeah and this this particular one is uh Amazing. probably the best walnut i've sawed through and again it it dried so nicely and this was one of the ones that oh. i i dried like the next day right off the mill no I've way on these, i've been sitting on these particular slabs for a while and then i got like the huh. perfect uh the customer that wanted something from uh, them. nice um, i milled you're actually gonna build the table i milled these they were 11 foot slabs i milled them at two and a half inches i surfaced them and they're still above two inches right now my god that's crazy that's is it do you find that it's actually 
in certain ways because I get asked the air drying question all the time. And I mostly tell people that if you're really good at air drying your wood, in other words, it doesn't, you don't cause a lot of warping and degrading, cracking and stuff in the air drying process, then great. Cause it's kind of like free drying, except for the, you're taking up space in your yard and waiting on the wood, but but otherwise it's kind of free drying. But do you find that in your environment that it's actually, and for your trees and your wood that you're cutting the way you're cutting it, do you find that you're getting a better, easier to work with product going more from green or is it kind of variable? Like what do you, what do you do? What do you like to do the most? It, well, for me, I don't have a great air drying space. So that kind of answers mm -hmm. your question. Like if I could, right. I would cut stuff and I would put it in the kiln right away. I would, you know, put it on a yep. low setting, let it, let it, uh, yep. you know, amp up, but Right. Um, you know, like right now I'm just, I'm air drying out in the sunlight. So that's not yeah. good. And right. I know that, but there's nothing yep. really I can really do about it besides put yep. some tin over it. Exactly. Um, so I've yep. had really, I've had the best results with walnut taking it right off the mill and putting it right in the, right in the kiln. It takes a little bit longer. You gotta be a little bit more careful, but sure. the results are really good. But worth it. Huh. Yep. Yeah. It's so interesting. I, I think it's choose your own adventure on this stuff, you know, like you can't, can you just can't say for sure what the, the right thing to do is exactly um, and then the yeah. other part of that if you're just starting out like there's no other option like you yep. you can't you can't sit for two years on, to air dry something before you put it in the right. kiln you have to no. you have to start turning it. inventory over and to me that was that was the biggest thing with with the eye dry is i could i could turn yeah. inventory way yep. faster yep you get cash in the bank much sooner which lets you do something with your business much sooner and grow faster and it just is like this it's a faster snowball that's what it is exactly yeah 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 and it just goes and goes i that's amazing um cool you, so your sounds like the future for you is kind of going with the flow a little bit a little bit you of see, that you see the live edge slab thing changing anytime soon or it's just feel like a style and a product that people are going to want on some level for a long time yeah i don't think i don't think it's going to go anywhere anytime soon i just think about you know myself i got into it not knowing anything and uh, i didn't even know any of this existed so the more you are able to let people know that you exist and what you do that I think the, the more success you're going to have yeah. in, in selling yep. your products because right. they don't even know exist either. When they see it. They're like, wow, you know, that's amazing. I want that. Right. So it seems like such a huge market. So especially for you being close to the cities and, it, and it just seems like a very localized market. This is something that I've always thought of with the small sawmill, and especially the slab businesses, you're nobody is going to build a massive hardwood slab business in one location to supply everybody on Amazon Prime with tabletop slabs because you can't ship them. So, right. so it seems like a business that just is always going to be local. And you're probably what? What do you? What do you? Would you say is your radius like? How far do you sell to? Hundred miles, or well, do you go farther than that? That's a great, great question. I mean, I know that in a thirty-mile radius of me, there's three million people, and if I can't sell enough to that, then there's something really wrong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So why kill yourself or spend the money to go any further than that? Right. Just ask them what they want. Yep. And make it. That's cool. Um, anything else you want to add, Matt, about your story? I really appreciate all the time you've taken with us. And I know people might have some questions, so I want to leave some time for that. Hmm. Yeah. So I guess it's, it's a, it's a fun business to be in. It's a lot of work, but it doesn't seem like work. And the only reason, the only reason that I'm at where I'm at today, I just quit my full-time job two weeks ago to do wood. No way. Um, wow. I uh, I wouldn't have been able to do it without without eye dry and having, oh, awesome. having that capability. So 
that means a lot to me. That's yep. great. That's amazing. Yep. <laughs> You're doing something that is hard work but it doesn't feel like work. And I know exactly what you're, you're saying. Cause I feel exactly the same way about what I've been doing all these years. And, but so it's almost like you're retiring. Yeah. I, well, when I bought <laughs> Doesn't the sawmill, it feel I a little bit like I, that? When I bought the sawmill, I actually said that I said, I think I retired early. And I didn't even know when I was getting into it. That, <laughs> so um, crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. You know. What a, what a weird thing. And it, it's funny. We sell to a lot of, a lot of guys that are retiring, <clears throat> they've wanted to do what you're doing for their whole career at whatever they were, air traffic controllers and corporate people and insurance or whatever. And they've always dreamt of doing this, but they weren't, they were maybe too afraid or who knows what to just leave that and jump into this enough to see if it could, they could make a go of it. So, you know. Yeah, I've, I've heard that story a lot that people, people wish they would have done something with, with themselves, you know, in this fashion right. and it just never did a long time ago. And, uh, yeah. I just, I just tell them, well, I'm here for your support. You know, I'm here to support you whatever you want to do, you know? So that's really cool. It's a way to be. Well, thanks. So we've been talking with Matt Rubin, Rubin custom sawmilling just outside Hastings, Minnesota, Rubin custom sawmill.com. Do you mind if I give out your phone number? Yeah, go ahead. Six five one two four two eight seven four seven. If you are looking to buy slabs, dry slabs, not the chickens. Si uh, yeah, maybe steal a rooster. Yeah. If yeah. If anybody <laughs> wants to talk about about drying or the kilns, just give me a yeah. call. I, I'm more than willing to chat with people. So appreciate that. Um, so we do. It looks like we do have. A question. One second. Um, so this is from Tim. He asks, "How how do you specifically ramp up your green walnut slabs? So, you know, to 120 degrees for a couple of weeks, then 135 for a couple of weeks, then 160. Is there a kind of a formula or a?" time frame that you like to use you obviously you've had some really good success trying walnut slabs and yeah and green, yeah you know. with, with uh with that i've so far you know i haven't experimented a whole lot that's kind of the other thing i'd like to do more now that yeah. i am full time i can i can experiment more with what's best but right and in that case it was just 120 degrees at 20 inches of mercury for two weeks mm -hmm. and then it yep. was full temperature the the rest of the three weeks so yeah and down to eight vacuum for the for yeah. the rest of the time yeah. yep cool yeah you just gotta get you gotta get that walnut starting to dry but without drying out the shell too fast or you case harden it and then it's just a uphill battle from there yeah and i've noticed when i'm cutting into the slabs like to cut a straight edge there's no pinching i mean it's you can tell yeah. it's dried nicely it's not yeah casing. there's no tension yeah there's no tension right. so that's yeah. great um I think there's a couple more questions here. If you have a second, hey Jess, if you're still listening, I think there's some questions, but I can't bring them up for some reason. Yeah, let me. Uh, I'm reading them off. <clears throat> Let's see. From Jason, we have: How are you getting the dark color to your walnut going from milling to drying the same day? I've been told they need to air dry for a while to get the dark color. Uh, honestly, it's, I think it just depends on that particular tree. The stuff, the stuff that, again, the stuff that I dried right off the mill that I've had really good success with. Um, I've done it. I've, I've had walnut that's been very dark and I've had walnut that's been totally different, really very light. And I think it's just the difference in the tree. I, I don't think that there's that much uh, variation just because of the, the air dried time. Great. Does anyone else have any other questions, comments? Well, if anybody does, uh, Jess, I think the plan is to put this video somewhere, right? Because yep. we're recording this. So we'll do that, I guess, on YouTube or something and people can. Yeah, we'll put this up on YouTube and there. we'll send it out. Uh, 
know, if you're subscribed to uh, the iDry newsletter, um, we'll get yep. this to you too that way. Um, so Great. definitely. Subscribe to the, subscribe to our YouTube channel too. Yep. Well, thanks everybody, Matt. Thanks for taking all the time, man. And congratulations on all your success and um, going out on your own. I know that was a bit of a leap of faith, but hard work pays off. Yep. It's awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate do do it, good Jeff. work. It's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Everybody, thanks for stopping and or taking the time with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Let us know if you have any questions.